All right, so five trade-offs to consider when remodeling your kitchen. Okay, so I'm Catherine Cherney. Um, a little bit about me, I'm a mother of twins, interior designer, I've been practicing since 2006. I'm in business with my husband. I live in LaGrange, which is a western suburb of Chicago. And my first degree was in psychology from the University of Michigan, Go Blue. Okay. Uh, our company, we sort of pride ourselves on being able to do full service design. So the designing, the planning, the actual building, the management of the contractors, and then the icing on the cake, the decorating. So that's one thing that makes us different than um, a lot of other companies. Uh, now I want to talk a little bit about the objectives of today. So here are our three objectives. We're going to identify the five trade-offs in remodeling your kitchen. Uh, I want you to be able to clearly define your remodeling objectives and evaluate how those trade-offs impact your goals. So we're going to get into it. Okay, five trade-offs. I love this picture. All right, so first trade-off is, is this space really meant for daily use or are you trying to aspire to like special events? So is it a matter of, um, you know, I'm going to host Thanksgiving and I need the capacity for 30 people. So how many people will this space serve? Uh, do you want to actually design for max capacity? So if you're designing for max capacity or for daily use, this impacts a lot of different things. Um, it will impact the size of your refrigerator. So like if you have two turkeys, some people do this, you might need a really large refrigerator. Um, do you have a lot of drinks that like sodas or something like that that you like to keep on hand? Maybe you need to have like a mini fridge in the island or a separate drink station. Uh, will you need a double oven? What size range will you need? Uh, this impacts your table or if you even have a table. So for example, if you're, little turban. If you're designing for daily use, you might say to yourself, you know what? I really... As a family, we like to just sit at the island and um, prepare meals there, talk. We don't really need a table. We have the dining room table. So that's one solution. Or you might have a large family. You want booth seating. So think about how you're going to use it and what your actual aspirations are. Um, also, if you have a large family, you might need a pantry. You might not need a butler's pantry, but you might need a pantry. So there's some different things to think about um, in terms of number one, daily use or special events. Next point to consider is cost or value. They're not the same thing. So let me explain that. Cost is the actual money to achieve the goal. How many thousands of dollars is this project going to be? And then there's the value. Um, that's your personal joy and the return on investment. Okay, so I'm just going to clear the table here. The cost and the return on investment are not one to one. So, for example, a major remodel is about 130K. That's a lot of money. Um, you'll get about 54% return on investment in that major remodel. So, 130K you'll get about 70K back in the value of your home. Um, a minor remodel, so you know, put new countertops down, maybe paint the doors, that's a higher return, that's about 83%. So a 20K, that's a minor remodel, you'll get 16K back on that. So where I'm going with this is that, what is the value of this project? Most of it is personal joy. So let's talk about personal joy. Um, these are things that will improve your everyday life. You know, you can imagine yourself making breakfast and you can do a quick move to the right and grab the eggs from the refrigerator. So like you, you can imagine yourself, um, having life just be easier or, you know, if you have a kitchen and there's something that just drives you bonkers, it's a pet peeve, you know, it's like, oh, I can't believe I have to go all the way over there to fill up my pot when the range is over here. Like, I know my work triangle is broken. So, you know, if there's a, a pet peeve or something that you're trying to ameliorate, that brings you personal joy. Um, and there's also something stranger, which is like, is it comforting emotionally? So like maybe you grew up in a house and you had like an appliance garage 
or you grew up with a double oven and that just somehow makes you feel good. That's okay. You're entitled to have some things that make you feel good. So think about that. Um, now, when it comes to that return on investment, everything needs to be appropriate for the marketplace and your neighborhood. So I'm gonna give two examples. If you're in like a modest income area, you could over improve. So maybe all of your neighbors just have laminate countertops. You should probably just do laminate countertops. Um, if return on investment is top of mind, if, you, if you're trying to recoup your costs. Um, now, if you love granite countertops and you know you're going to stay in your home for about 10 years or more, then people will say, and I would say that you're going to get enough benefit from it emotionally to make it worth it. Um, but when, when you're not going to stay in your home for 10 years or more, maybe seven, try not to over improve it. it. It will be really painful when you go to sell. Um, so to make sure your property is improved to the level appropriate for the marketplace and neighborhood, talk to some realtors. You could get an appraiser over and basically see what has sold in the last six months in your neighborhood. So that might be a mile from your house, same school district, that kind of thing. All right, this thing's gonna load up. Now, this is one of my favorites, function or aesthetics, number three. So here's the thing about function or aesthetics. This is one of the most personal things you have to think about. So you really need to evaluate your lifestyle. So um, think about this, like you might really want that second sink like a separate bar area in the kitchen. But would you be willing to forego, you know, the wolf range in order to move the utilities to achieve that? So like you have all sorts of different cost benefits to this space. Um, would, you, would you be willing to forego your countertops in order to get a custom refrigerator? So it's, it's all like um, cost benefit analysis, what does it mean to you? How will it improve your lifestyle? Uh, things to really think about when you're evaluating how it will improve your lifestyle will be like the layout of utilities. So where is the sink relative to the refrigerator for someone to go grab some water? Um, is there a work triangle? Are there separate zones? So is there like a, a station for people to make to prep drinks or a food prep? and like a chopping board and garbage can and dispose all, the, all those things together. Um, you also have to think about the finish level you're trying to achieve. Like, is this highly custom? Is it semi-custom? Um, do you want any special name, names or brands? Do you want the Wolf Range? Is that very meaningful to you? Would you go for a, a GE? signature profile or something so that you can have other finishes elevated. So this is that deeply personal thing where you have to evaluate your priorities. Um, and then also think about technologies. So, you know, there's a lot of smart home things that are out there now. And, you know, maybe you want an outlet with a USB that's kind of low, low, low hanging fruit in terms of technologies. Maybe you want to be able to say, Alexa, turn on my kitchen lights. Um, maybe you want a, a smart dishwasher. Hey, Alexa. Um, or, or different things like that. So think about the technologies that are meaningful to you and would improve your lifestyle. Uh, this one's really psychological. So the ideal me or the real me. Um, you know, so you might have ideas of yourself that like, oh, if, if, I, if I had like a kid zone, like where the kids could do their homework and I'd have a big whiteboard with their calendar and everything, then life would be good. I would be organized. You have to ask yourself, like, is that realistic? Like my setting will help me, but it's not going to make you a different person. Um, you, can, you can do your best. So think about what that is. Also think about, you know, is, are you trying to aspire to someone else's vision? Like, because you think that that's important. So evaluate your deep priorities. 
What will make your life better? How you really live. Like, do you come in and everybody drops the stuff on the counter? That's okay. You just have to know it and design for it. Um, instead of, you know, some cookie cutter solution, like make it for yourself. Ah, speed or patience. I love this picture because in my mind, it sort of like captures construction projects. So this is a picture of a running turtle. Look at him go. So the way to handle speed and the amount of patience you'll need through this project is actually with preparation. You don't want to be in a situation where this guy's in your house and he's saying, hey, can you get the tile tomorrow? It's like, I don't have tile picked out. You have to have all your ducks in a row. So ask yourself all of these questions. So why are you remodeling? Have you made a budget? Who's creating the design? Do you have blueprints drawn up? Where's your full list of materials? I mean, we're talking, you know, how, what are your tiles? Who's getting the under cabinet lights? What's, how about the garbage disposal? So everything you can think of, think top to bottom, all the pieces. So get your full list of materials. Who's managing the project? Who's gonna make sure the tile's there when the backsplash guy is in? Um, you know, who's coordinating when the countertop is getting measured? Is the sink template there? These kinds of things. Will you pull permits? What's your interview process? How will the contractors be hired and paid? Who will resolve conflicts? It's gonna come up, something will happen. Uh, do you have budget for errors and changes? One thing I always tell people is budget about 20% of things going wrong. So it could be human error, uh, something is shipped, it's broken. So anticipate something will go wrong. 20% something will go wrong. Here we go. We have developed a tool called the Scope Finder. And what this is, is basically going through a space and thinking about all the different things you need. So for example, lighting, is there a chandelier? Um, is there general ambient lighting? Are you putting in recessed cans? How about some accent lights, task lights, wall swingers, different things like that. So think about your scope. And if you present it to your contractor, then they know what they're bidding on. And, and that's fabulous. Like they would love to know, am I putting in under cabinet lights? Am I putting in pendants? Is there um, like in cabinet lighting? Are we doing up lighting? So there's lots of different things to think about. So if you know what you're, what you're doing, it will benefit everybody. We also have a solution. Um, for developing your scope and that's sort of your budget finder so if you want to do good better best so uh, you might want to know how much per square foot will my countertop be I have 30 square feet I need to anticipate mm, I don't know four thousand dollars so I didn't do the math in my head sorry guys so um, think about the whole project from the budget standpoint of materials, and that's relatively fixed. You can choose that even before you have a contractor selected. So you might know before you've even started the bidding process that it's probably going to be $60,000 for all the materials. Go into that ahead of time. So here's a recap. What are our five trade-offs? It's daily use versus special events, the cost versus the value, function versus aesthetics, the ideal me versus the real me, and speed versus patience. Okay, now it's going to happen, you might feel stuck at some point and you might need to reevaluate your goals. So this happened to me just the other week. There was a person that wanted a 48 inch professional range. I mean, we're talking $13,000 range. It wasn't in their budget. So um, we had to really think it through. And what you can do is, um, basically I fall back on these three principles when I'm trying to evaluate my priorities and what I can sort of juggle or, or weigh between. So there's economy of scale, future proof, proofing, and phasing of the process. So for example, with this you know, $13,000 range, um, did, that person didn't have it in their budget, they had an old 36 inch range, but they knew that this other range created more heat and they had to have more distance for the cabinets around it. So 
we all made a choice to future proof the design. So the wall cabinets, the base cabinets are set up for that 48 inch range that they can get in a year or two years. Um, so we future proofed it, we phased it, we knew we were going to do that. Now economy of scale has to do with oftentimes your, tr your trades people. So like if you, if you know that you're hiring a tiler, try to get all your tiling done through that process. So um, fall back on those three principles when you're trying to evaluate where you can shift priorities, scoot things down the line, that kind of thing, okay? All right, oh, here you go. We're going to have an upcoming workshop and you know, this is our first one. So we don't know if lunchtime works better for people, if like weeknights are good, evenings or Saturday mornings. So if you guys have an opinion, send it my way. I'd love to know and um, we can make a workshop work for you, all right? Okay, here we go. You could schedule a free discovery call. Just, you know, go to designinside.com slash schedule. It's pretty simple. And you can pick a slot to have a discussion with us about your project. Um, we can give you a couple tips and we'd love to set up a consultation and walk you through the process, the budget, those kinds of things. Thank you so much for being here. How'd I do on time? I don't know. I think pretty good. So thank you again. Um, and this is time for our Q&A, if you have one. Okay. So I'm here. Any questions? Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Sorry. I have these he um, earbuds. Earbuds. I don't know what they're earbuds. called. Earbuds. Great. Sorry. Movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So, um, I bought a house recently, just in June, <laughs> in a really historic neighborhood. It's a carriage house. It's built in 1861. I'm surrounded by like serious mansions, but there's some real, you know, bad houses here too. Mm. I have, but they did this. All right, whoever owned this house before did this weird remodel, and it, it, obviously in the 70s, there's like sunken living rooms yeah. and lots of strange elevations. And I have this tiny, awful kitchen. I've never had so many burns in my life. I drop things all the time because it's so cramped. Mm. Everything's old. I hate it. But mm. anyway, it, next to my kitchen, there's an adjoining dining space, which is just a cavernous, awful spot that mm. is totally useless. We store, we're storing our books there. So anyway, I had this idea. I want to tear down the wall, level out the floor, and make it one big sort of modern open room. Okay. My question is, is this going to ruin the historic element of the house? Is, is this going to be just such a costly thing that I'm, because, you know, my husband moves us a lot. Is this a waste of our time and money? I, you know, I don't even really know what my questions are really. I just have a lot of anxiety about it because, mm -hmm. you know, my, my vision, I imagine costs just, you know, a fortune. Yeah. So anyway, go help. All me. right. So here are my thoughts. Um, number one, if, if this remodel is 70s and looks 70s and your house isn't from the 70s, you're correcting someone else's mistake and that has some value. Um, so my questions would be, you know, how long will you be in this house? And would the level of personal joy you get from the remodel, from not burning your hands all the time, be worth the, yeah, hey, you know, the hospital bills. <laughs> will, will it be worth it given that, you know, for a major remodel, you might only get 50% back on yeah. the house. So it's like, you know, so let's pretend, let's pretend it's a hundred thousand dollar pro project. You think you're going to get $50,000 from it back. So if you have 10 years of joy, $50,000. Will you get $5,000 of pleasure of it in 10 years? Mm. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a really strange way to think about it. But if we're trying to like put value to something that's sort of fleeting, that's a, right. way, to, that's right. a way to evaluate it. All right. Did that kind of help? Uh, yeah. Thank you. A little? Yeah. Mm. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, if there aren't any more questions... Um, I'll just kind of go back to that five trade-offs slide. 
So you have those in front of you. And then I think that'll be it. Well, thanks everybody. Um, I enjoyed doing this. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.